Hello and welcome to our um, May 16th worship service. Um, it is the sun seventh and last Sunday in the season of Easter. This is going to be the beginning of a very busy week. Uh, Sunday evening between 6 and 7 p.m., uh, Pastor Melanie Heck has organized a family faith night at Zion for the Confirmands and their family. This will be the Confirmands both from Zion and also from the churches in New Rochester and also perhaps in Bradner. On Tuesday at 5.15, the Loving Hands Board will have their meeting. And next Sunday, uh, along with our worship, we also will be confirming two of our young people and celebrating the graduation from high school of another. So be sure to show up next week for all the celebrations. This week we celebrate the birthdays of Ava Majun on the 16th, of Corey Poling on the 19th, and Judy Lowe on the 21st. May God bless all of you on your happy day and throughout the year to come. We also celebrate the anniversary of Tom and Christy Holter on the 22nd. And may God bless your marriage and fill your life together with joy and peace. If you check our prayer list, you'll see that it's shrinking. Thanks God for that. But we also, along with these people, continue to pray for the victims of natural disasters, especially for those affected by the COVID virus and all the people in India that are fighting that battle. We also pray for the parents, teachers, students, and support staff as they finish off this school year. And finally, we pray for our military service personnel and their loved ones and give thanks to God for their service to their nation. We extend our congratulations to Hayden Holter and the Eastwood Middle School 4x200 track team. This last week or two, they broke a school record that was set back in 2005. Seems like every month or so our high school or grade school children are doing marvelous things, and we give thanks to God for that. On uh, Sunday afternoon, the Wood County Health Department will be back again from 2 to 6 p.m. at Eastwood Elementary School to administer first or second shots of the vaccine. No appointments necessary. If you have a shot card, remember to bring it along so they can note the second dosage. This Sunday is also the last day to order germaniums for our Pentecost next week. If you haven't ordered yet or would like to, uh, please let Marcia know this week. Then she will take care of it for you. In our upcoming activities, uh, along with the Pentecost activities, we also have our summer worship schedule beginning on June the 6th. Um, worship time will change to 9.30 a.m. Also in June on the 14th to the 18th will be our Lucky Vacation Bible School. And parents, if you'd like to get your children registered, You'll find the contact information here in your bulletin or talk to Marsha and she'll help you. With all that in mind, I'll ask Anna to help us uh, with the introduction to our worship. Good morning. The Gospel for Easter's seventh Sunday is always taken from a long prayer Jesus prays to his followers in John's Gospel on the night before his death. And it always includes Jesus' desire that the followers will be one as he and his Father are one. This oneness is not mere doctrinal agreement or institutional unity, but mutual abiding, interpenetrating life, mutual love and joy. This oneness is the work of the Spirit, whom we have received but also await. Come, Holy Spirit, as we begin our service. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death into life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rain to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and your forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your, protect, your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is found in the book of Acts, the first chapter. The introduction tells us that in the days between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost, Peter oversees the process whereby one of the members of the community of believers is chosen to be the twelfth apostle in order to fill the vacancy created by Judas and his treachery and death. And now our reading. In those days Peter stood up among the believers. And he said, Friends, the scripture has to be fulfilled, which by the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have a accompanied us during this time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas who was also known as Justice and Matthias then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Jesus turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was added to the eleven disciples. Our psalm today is psalm number one. And we'll read it responsibly by verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the ways of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading comes from 1 John, the fifth chapter. The introduction tells us God 
has borne believers to the gifts of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in the Son of God believes in the witness of God and has the promise of that eternal life. And now, let us begin that reading. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is that testimony. God gave us eternal life. And this life is his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 6. Glory to you, O Lord. The introduction lets us know that in this reading, the church hears Jesus' word on the night before his death. His prayer for his disciples and for all who would believe in him through their works. And now, our Holy Gospel. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have been kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with you, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have made, have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Let me start the sermon today by recounting something sort of strange that happened this week. I was sitting in a council meeting Tuesday night, and the question came up about some people we hadn't seen in a while. And one of our stalwart council members looked up and said, sounds kind of like one of those things the pastor was talking about in his sermon. I know one of these guys. I'll give him a call and see how he's doing. And the next thing I know... The leader of the council was asking, who else knows somebody and who else can make these calls? And I thought, oh my God, 
There's people actually listening to the sermons. I'm going to have to watch what I say. And then after a moment to catch my breath, it occurred to me, wow, if this is how it works, maybe what else can I tell them that God wants them to do? Maybe I can get them doing that too. And finally, on the way home, it occurred to me, what if this became a trend? And finally, after a while, I, I, I go to start my sermon, and the congregation as a body says, been there, done that, still doing it. How about that? And I'd realized that my job is done. That their relationship with God, that their service to God is complete, and I can retire. Wow, what a thought. i got to say, it's a wonderful idea. I see the same thing with Jesus. Over the last seven weeks, we've watched Jesus try to tell his disciples everything they need to know about going out and telling the good news about Jesus Christ to the world. And so on this last week, we ask ourselves, so what now? What does Jesus do? And he does the same thing any good leader would do when he's finished training his troops and he's about to send them out on their own. He prays for them. In what's sometimes referred to as the longest prayer in the Bible, Jesus goes over with his Father. All he has trained these people and how he has tied them to him, to, the, to God. And how now he's asking God to keep them together in one body, in one relationship with him. And it reminds God that they're going into a world that really doesn't much care for them. In fact, that hates them. And that they're not part of that world anymore. He's trained them to be part of God's world. And all of this together makes me think that the true test of our relationship with God, Jesus' relationship here and then ours later, is that of prayer. How do we get to know God better? How do we come to be one with God, as it says here in, in the lesson? Only through prayer. Only through communicating back and forth with God every day. <laughs> And as an example, I'd like to, to tell you a story. It's about a young man that came into this country um, as an immigrant. Had his little green card or visa or whatever. And he had one ambition. And that <coughs> was to, to be a citizen of this country and to, as a citizen, own a business. To him, that was the greatest goal in his whole life. The only goal. <laughs> but to achieve that goal, he had to in learn English. So he went to one of the classes that the government gave him. It's a free class, and they teach you English. And there he learned his first lesson. It seems in America, you get what you pay for. For certainly in this class, what he got for free was just about nothing. When he went to the instructor and says, I, I don't understand this page, the instructor simply said, read it again. And if you still don't understand it, then maybe you shouldn't be a citizen in this country, and left. He was getting his government paycheck the same no matter what. And so as he puzzled over the text, a friend of his in the class said, there's a lady in our neighborhood, and when we get a, le a letter from the government that we don't understand, she translates the English into Spanish for us. Maybe she can help you with the book. So one evening, <laughs> he picked up a bag full of day-old goods from the bakery where he worked. The owner said, you know, might as well take them home instead of throwing them out. Went to the lady's house, knocked on the door, offered her the baked goods and says, can you help me understand this book? The lady looked at the textbook and smiled and says, 
I used to teach things like this when I was a teacher. Why don't you sit down on the porch and we'll talk? And as she limped over to her swing and he sat next to her and she opened the book, he says, Un momento, por favor, please. One moment, please. He bowed his head, made the sign of the cross, and he said, Heavenly Father, let this woman you have sent me to be the one who can help me to achieve my goal. And also bless her for her work by making whatever makes her limp so sadly be better. Amen. The lady was so touched that she said, <laughs> Tell you what, let's start your lesson by translating your prayer into English so you can learn some of the English words and how they work. And that became their routine. They'd start by him offering a prayer, and then translating the prayer, and then getting into the book on verbs and nouns and participles and things like that. <laughs> and every week it was a new prayer. He, prayed for his boss's bad back and his bad temper. And he prayed for Rosita's crippled hands as she iced the cupcakes. And he prayed for the kids in the neighborhood that they not become gangsters. And oh my, and he learned and he learned. And finally, one day he became a citizen and the teacher that helped him was right there in the front seat to applaud. And after a few years, Ramon bought a building and started his own bakery. And on the wall of the bakery is a picture of this teacher. And under the picture is the prayer, Holy Father, thank you so much for sending me this angel to help me with my greatest need. In Jesus' name, amen. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, the teacher never ate stole, stale, stale donuts again. Every morning when the stuff came out of the oven, a boy from the bakery ran a box over to her, and on the box was the word, thank you. <laughs> Think about this. Is Ramon different than most people? I suspect he is, because you notice how deeply God is tied into his life? Before he even begins a new series of lessons, he wants to pray about it. And he prays for the people around him. He talks to God daily. And maybe that's what makes his life special. I've been told that the less that we have, the more important God can become. And maybe that's true too, because I want to ask, do you pray every day? Do you pray often? What do you talk to God about? Well, you know, it's not that easy to do. We're awful busy and we got a lot of things to do and that sometimes there just isn't time and I'd like to, but I just don't know what to say and besides which, and the excuses go on and on. And I thought maybe it'd be cool to tell you about some people that I've talked to about this before. One lady tells me that I always pray when I peel potatoes because I have to peel a lot of them. <laughs> and it's just like a robotic action. I've done it so many times I don't have to think about it, so I'm free to think about what I want to say to God. Another person says, I like to pray to God as I drive to work because it's the only time I have to be alone in my life. From the day, moment I wake up until I get home and go to bed, somebody's always there except when I'm driving. My favorite was from someone who told me that the very best prayer chapel in the world is a seat of my John Deere. Whether you're cutting the grass out and back or tilling the fields, you're up there, it's just you and God. And you're looking at some of his most wonderful work. <laughs> if you think about it, maybe there's a lot more times that you could pray to God than you think about. Or than you understood. And maybe you should start using those times 
to go to God and tell him, him what it is that's on your mind. Are you troubled by something? Are you happy with something? Are you perplexed or confused? Are you angry? There's a hymn that says, take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's the best I can offer you today. Take it to the Lord in prayer. So this week, that's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to find your prayer chapel, your prayer time in your busy schedule, in your life. And then I'd like you to think about what do I want to share with God today? And if it only takes a minute or two, then take that minute or two. And if it takes longer, go to it. But communicate with God. Get to know him better. Let him know what's on your mind and how you think. And perhaps through the prayer, God will respond by giving you the wisdom to deal with whatever it is that you're thinking about. In Jesus' name, I hope that he does. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to join me as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, bless and care for the caregivers and guardians of our world, the emergency workers, nurses, doctors, therapists, and soldiers, police and firefighters as well. May your love and compassion comfort and sustain them. Hear us, O oh God. We know your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, who are suffering, who are poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Please grant healing and love to all in need today. We ask you your healing especially in grace to be with Janet and Cindy, with Bill and Russ, with Chuck and Janet, Melissa, Steve and Doris, Jim, Frank, Kendra, with Joyce and Sandra and Deborah, with Dell and Joan. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from becoming envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
saving God. Your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give our thanks to all those who continue to support this ministry with their gifts and with their offerings, with their time and with their skills, with their prayers, and especially with their love. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us offer to God the prayer that his Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. May the God of life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us repeat together our mission statement, connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and to the world. Anna, do you have your closing comment from the clergy coaching network they sent us theology 101 and that read the question should never be is the action leftist or right-winged liberal or conservative socialist or capitalist the question should be does this action love my neighbor Look out for their interests more than my own and manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Then go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. One last thing. I'd like to say happy birthday to Pastor Frank today. This is his birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday, Frank. And have tons more, because we need you.